Hello, I'm Pastor Daniel Flukey from St. Peter Lutheran Church. We are a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America in Green, Iowa. And today is Sunday, October 31st, Reformation Day. It's good to be with you today. In our Sunday service this weekend, we are celebrating the confirmation of eight of our ninth grade students. So this is a big day here at St. Peter. It's also Halloween. And if you're in the green area, you should know that uh, during trick-or-treating time tonight from 5 to 7, our youth will be going door-to-door collecting non-perishable, non-expired food for the food bank here in town. Or if you are going trick-or-treating and so you won't be home, the Boy Scouts will be out uh, just outside the high school gym on the 4th Street side, and they will be collecting food as well, and they will trade you a hot dog for your donations. So thanks for your support as we work to trick-or-treat so that others can eat. Then next weekend, November 6 and 7, we will be marking All Saints Day. So that's a special service on both Saturday at uh, 6 p.m. and Sunday at 9.30 a.m., celebrating the promise of God's faithfulness to God's people even beyond death. So it's a special service as we remember those in our congregation who have died in the last year. Today... For Reformation Day, I want to share two readings with you. First, from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances, that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy, so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life, and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you, so that your days may be long. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently, so that it may go well with you, and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Here ends the first lesson. And the Holy Gospel according to Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with each other. And seeing that Jesus answered them well... He asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So in today's gospel reading we just heard, a scribe, an educated person, comes to Jesus and asks him, Teacher, which commandment is the first of all? Did you know that there are some 613 commandments traditionally numbered in the Old Testament? If you're a confirmation student listening or watching, you should, because we just mentioned it on Wednesday. So the scribe's question here is, which of those 613 is the most important? Jesus boils it down to one. Love God. And then he mentions the second commandment, but really the second is the natural consequence of the first. Love God and love people. Because if you love God... You can't help loving your neighbor. So as we mark Reformation Day today and celebrate Confirmation here, our focus is on love. God is love. And God has created us out of love, loved us into existence. And it is the nature of love 
to overflow from God to us, back to God, and out from us to our neighbors. The Reformation of the Church that began 504 years ago today was about calling the church back to a focus on God's love. In particular, Martin Luther called us to look to Jesus on the cross, giving his life for us as the ultimate expression of God's love. Each of our confirmation students here at St. Peter has chosen a verse, a Bible verse that's meaningful to them for their confirmation. And as you hear their verses, I want, you, I want to urge you to keep in mind this focus on love. So Addison chose a passage from 1 Timothy, which says, Train yourself in godliness, for while physical training is of some value, godliness is valuable in every way, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. And she wrote about being the best you can through the strength of God. Well, the best you can be is God's child, and that is who you are. In love, God has claimed each of you, you watching this, in the waters of baptism, naming you as God's own, identifying you as belonging to God. And if you aren't baptized, I would love to talk with you and let's talk about the meaning of baptism and get you baptized. It's a wonderful expression, a means of grace, an expression of God's love for you. Now, all of us have lots of identities, parent, child, husband, wife, sister, brother, athlete, musician, friend, many more that you could come up with. All of those physical roles you have in life are important. But the most important identity you have, that you will ever have, is child of God. And that's what our confirmation kids are affirming this week, affirming their baptism. And knowing who you are begins with knowing who God is. So in Deuteronomy, as the people of Israel are about to embark on a new chapter of life, as they're getting ready to enter the promised land, Moses gives them some instructions. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And that's the first thing that I hope you know, that I hope you've gotten out of sermons and time at church and confirmation class, whatever it is. But I hope what you've gotten out of church is knowing who God is. And then Moses gives them a commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. So first commandment, love God. In the gospel reading, Jesus says this is the most important commandment, loving the God who loves us. And Moses tells the people to keep this commandment, to remember these words, keep them in your heart, recite them to your children, pass them on, bring your kids to church, tell them the story, raise them to know who God is and to love God and to know God loves them. Pass on the faith. Let this promise of God's love and this commandment to love God sink into your lives and give you strength. Moses says to bind these words as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead. Write them on your door frame so you'll see every time you go in and out. Let this love of God be the foundation of your life, guiding who you are. Carter chose a verse, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And as I'll tell Carter in the service, that does not mean you can do whatever you want to do. Completing confirmation class or being baptized does not give you the ability to fly. You can pray as hard as you want to have a billion dollars appear in your bank account. It's not going to happen. Carter wrote that to him, this verse means, no matter what I'm doing, I can power through it with God's help. And that's true. The promise is that whatever you do, wherever you go, God is with you. God is giving you the strength to get through whatever challenges come your way in life, the good times and the bad times. So Christ strengthening you is really about building your life on the foundation of Jesus, the foundation of God's love for you. It's about knowing who God is and who God says you are, finding your identity in Christ as God's beloved child. In Meredith's verse from Isaiah 43, we get this great promise that with God at the center of our lives as the foundation, we're never alone. Her verse is, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. 
For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Life can be hard. You know that as well or better than I do. Hopefully the number of actual literal floods or fires is small, but there are storms in life. You can say as enthusiastically as you want while you're watching this video or in church that God is the foundation of your life, that you believe God is with you wherever you go, but know that your faith will be challenged. None of us live up to what we claim to believe. Jesus says the most important commands are to love the Lord your God with all that you are and then to love your neighbor as yourself. Your faith should shape how you treat other people, what you do with your life, but none of you are perfect. You're not perfect. None of us have it all figured out. I certainly don't. We're going to fail. We're going to let God down, break the commandments, not love our neighbors as ourselves, miss opportunities to love our neighbors, sometimes even actively harm our neighbors. But, and this is the message Martin Luther focused on 500 years ago, it is not up to us. None of us can live up to God's commandments on our own. But our faith does not depend on us. God's love for you does not depend on you, and that is really good news. We are saved by God's grace as a free gift. And there is nothing that can separate us from that love of God shown in Christ Jesus. Nothing with the power to change our identity as God's beloved children. So Meredith's verse talked about earthly obstacles we can face. Nolan picked a verse from Romans 14 that goes a step farther to say, not even death can end God's love. He picked, if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. What a powerful promise. And we can trust that promise because, as Olivia's verse says, God is the one in charge. God is the creator of the universe, the giver of life who makes this promise. Olivia picked Psalm 147 verses 4 and 5. He determines the number of stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The one who created the universe who put the galaxies in place, whose understanding has no limit. This is the God who loves you. This almighty, all-powerful God came into this world in the person of Jesus Christ to lay down his life for us, for you, for me, all out of love. And then he rose again, because even death cannot stop God. God is worthy of our trust. God is able to be the foundation of our lives. The God who calls the stars by name also calls you by name. Sometimes, of course, that can be hard to believe. Addie wrote that sometimes she struggles with seeing God during hard times. And she picked the perfect verse for that from John 13. It says, Jesus replied, You don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. There are things in life we don't understand. God's love is not always visible. Our human nature is to look for an explanation for everything that happens, but everything does not happen for a reason. The Bible doesn't claim that. Sometimes things in life just happen because we live in a broken world, because we're not in heaven yet. That's obvious by looking around. It's okay to not understand and to question. But as you wonder and question, hold on to the promise of God's love, the promise of God's grace, the promise that God has claimed you and is with you in the midst of whatever is going on. Alex's verse is similar, a reminder from Proverbs 16 that says, the human mind plans the, 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 human mind plans the way, but the Lord directs the steps. Not everything happens for a reason, but in the midst of all things, God is at work. Living a life of faith means trusting in God. That's what faith means. It means trust. Relying on our foundation of faith to show us how to take the next step, to do the next right thing. And finally, Clayton picked a verse that's a reminder that this world is not all that there is. He picked 1 Corinthians 13.10, which says, But when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away with. Confirmation is not supposed to be the end of anyone's faith journey. We pray that it's not. 
two years, two school years of Wednesday evening classes, watching some sermon videos online, even decades of Bible study that maybe you have, none of that is anywhere near enough time to figure out God. It's not enough time to grasp the fullness of Christ's love for you. The journey of faith is a journey for the rest of your life. You're not going to reach perfection in this world. You're not going to be able to truly love God with all that you are and perfectly love your neighbors as yourself. But this is not the end. God is not done with any of us. None of us have it all figured out this side of heaven, and that is okay. Confirmation and everything else in church is not about passing a test or having the best project or even doing enough worship notes and then you're done and you're in. Faith, faith is not about having enough knowledge, knowing about God. Faith is about knowing God, not knowing about God, but knowing God. It's about a relationship of love, God's love for you and your love for God in response. So for all of us, the journey of faith is about growing in your understanding that God has already loved you, understanding what God has done for you, the love God already has for you, recognizing God's gift of grace freely given to you, and letting that move from a head understanding down to your heart to be the foundation of your life. May God bless you today and always as you live into God's grace for you. Amen. If you're watching this and you're looking for a church home or you know somebody who is and you're in the green area, I invite you to come check out St. Peter. We'd love to meet you. We're going to be having a two-week new member orientation next week and the week after, so this is the perfect time to come check out this church. Call the church office or talk to me if you have any questions. Also, if you'd like to give an offering to support our work here at St. Peter, you can do so by going to www.stpetergreen.com giving or find our congregation on the Vanco Giving app. Or, of course, you can always mail in or drop off an offering here at church. And as always, thank you for your generosity. I do have one sad piece of news to share with you today before we end this video. Longtime St. Peter member Gail Schaefer uh, died earlier this week. She was out in Colorado with family, uh, living there for the past few years. Her funeral service for Gail Schaefer will be on Saturday, November I believe it's November 6th. I don't want to get that wrong. Yes, November 6th, Saturday, this Saturday at 3 o'clock here at church. So 3 in the afternoon. There will be visitation also here at church uh, for two hours beforehand. So 1 o'clock on Saturday the 6th, visitation. Then 3 o'clock, there's a funeral service here for Gail Schaefer. Please keep her family in your prayers. Now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. See you next week.